Paul Mensa's Wall of Power TV is brought to you in part by Iron Range Resources and Rehabilitation Two Gingers Irish Whiskey Grey Wolf Lodge, your home away from home in the North Woods and the Solar Arts Building in Northeast Minneapolis. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Wall of Power TV. I'm your host, Paul Metzen. We have a great show for you tonight. Beverly Guitar Watkins was born April 6, 1939 in Atlanta, Georgia. She's an American Grammy Award winner, blues guitarist. Sandra Pointer Jones wrote, Beverly is a pyrotechnic guitar maven whose searing ballistic attacks on the guitar have become allegorical tales within the blues community. George Varga, reviewing her debut CD, observed that Watkins sings and plays with enough poise and verve to make musicians half her age or younger consider alternative means of employment. She's playing in town tonight at uh, the Greatest Little Blues Club in the Twin Cities Shaw's Bar in just a few hours, and she was nice enough to grace us with her presence in conversation. Beverly, welcome to All of Power TV. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and having me here. When did you start part of your career where you were recording CDs under your, or albums under your own name? Okay, well, it, it rocked on, uh, I said, ni around 1979. Uh, okay. Piano Red, well, the band broke up and everybody went their ways. Then I joined uh, another group called, um, it was the Reverberators. Okay. Um, Leroy Reddins, Otis Reddins for his cousin. Really? There in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. and, you were uh, connected. Yes, yes. To and a uh, real I was the lead guitar player, you wow. know. Uh, so it rocked on then. Um, I stayed with them for about three, I said, oh, I said about three years. And then I joined a group called um, Mr. Eddie Tigner. What was that called? Eddie Tigner. Okay, Eddie Tigner, okay. He's the original Ink Spot. Really? Now you heard this tune, If I Didn't Care? Mm hmm. Yes, mm hmm. So I went out on the road with uh, Mr. Tigner. He's 92 and he's still playing. I you got to get a hold of him too. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Eddie Tigner, please. And he's still playing? Yes. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. So I went on the road with him playing bass back then. Hmm. We would go to Holiday Inns and stay, you know, and play the lounge. Yeah. And uh, maybe stay there for one week and then we would uh, head out to all the Holiday Inns hmm. uh, with Mr. Eddie Tigner. And um, after I came off the road with uh, Mr. Tigner, I have a great bass player, Stanley Watkins, in Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. Are they, you related? Yes, it's my son. It's your son. My son. Mm -hmm. How many kids do you have? I have one key, uh, one and five grandkids. Okay, congratulations, yes. Grandma. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so your son's a bass player, and yes. he was playing with you then. He plays with me sometimes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, is this the record that won the Grammy? That's it. Yes. Back in business, and when did mm -hmm. this come out, Beverly? Ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. Mm -hmm. You do a. That's the first performance, first song I heard you play on YouTube, and it was just dynamite. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're going to do one off of the CD, ladies and gentlemen, a little thing called um, Sugar Baby Swing. Right. Thank you. 
she go about? That's why I call her Susan, baby. Welcome back to Wall of Power TV. I'm your host, Paul Mensah. 
I've really been enjoying my guests tonight. This conversation is just a fantastic. Thank you. From Atlanta, Georgia, who's in town just to play one night at Shaw's Bar. Now, when did you develop your stage style? I know you play the guitar behind your back every now and then. Yes, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that from inspired by any musicians you saw over the years? Well, how that started was I played at Underground Atlanta. Okay. About six years down there playing for tips. Okay. And um, that's where the vocal kicked in. Okay. When I played rhythm with Piano Red, I didn't I didn't do any singing unless it was backup singing. Okay. Or whatever. So Beverly, you were just telling us in in the uh, last part of the conversation. You've cleaned houses, you worked yes. in a car wash, yes, and uh, you played open stages. When was your first, what you would call your big break to get you to where you are now? Okay, my first big break was when, as I was mentioning, that Mudcat, uh, <clears throat> he mentioned to me, uh, Bevel, I got somebody, I have somebody I want you to meet. I said, okay, uh, he said his name is Tim Duffy from Music Makers. Okay. So he arranged uh, for Mr. Tim to come to Underground to hear uh, just, uh, I had nothing but a drum machine, as I okay. call it, you know, and myself. Yeah. Now the reason why I sound like, uh, I've had someone, some people to tell me, I thought it was a whole band, but see, I played rhythm guitar with Piano Red. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Tim came to my show one Saturday at Underground Atlanta. And, and Music Makers Relief, they're the group that helps uh, musicians, primarily older musicians that might be down on their luck or need money or need to pay a hospital bill. They help them out. Yes, right? yes. One of the one of the greatest organizations. Yeah, I think Bonnie Raitt has done a lot of stuff yes, with them. Yes, yes, yes. And Taj Mahal. And Taj Mahal. Love yes. them both, mm -hmm. those two. So Mr. Tim came down and he just stood, he just sit there and he uh, caught my show and then when he got through he dropped fifty dollars in my tip bucket. Thank you, Mr. Oh Duffy. boy, and I really wanted to play it in. Yeah, you know? <laughs> keep going. So he told me. Uh, Plus, he, you didn't have to split any of the money with your drum machine. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, he said, "Beverly, say." Um, I've heard so much about you. He said, you sound good. He said, I want to, <clears throat> he said, I want to help you. I said, hey, I'm ready. Yeah. He said, hey, let me know when. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, he said, okay. He said, give me about two months or whatever. So that's when he got uh, my first debut uh, CD. This is, this is the one? No, that's the gospel. Oh, that's this the gospel? One, yeah. Okay, uh -huh. oh, this one. Yes. And this one, one your first one, and it won a Grammy. Yes, from you. Mm -hmm. Give me some luck here. I want some Thank luck to you. rub off here. Thank you. Good for you. Yes. Yeah. 
thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, mm -hmm. and what year was that, Beth? 97. Okay. Because so. while my dad had had a stroke, he was in hospital. I was in the studio then. But uh, anyway, I did get there in time enough to talk with my father before he passed. Oh, and he knew that the CD was being, or the record was being recorded. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And I mean, you know, that was a great experience. We did 23 tours with uh, Winston Cigarette mm -hmm. Company. And then after that, we uh, came in and then we did a half of a uh, uh, tour. The 23 was national. Then uh, on the next uh, month, uh, we went international. Okay. And I have uh, played amongst two and three thousand people. Wow. R.D., yeah. excuse me, what, we'll edit this. What's your last name again? R.D. Olson. 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 Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was uh, speaking with R.D. Olson, who is uh, your harmonica player. Yes. And helping mm -hmm. you lead the band tonight at Shaw's. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's been amazing watching you, how audiences respond to you. Yes, yes. What do you feel when you're playing? Well, number one, let me say this here. I give it number one all to Jesus Christ. He's the head of my life. Okay. Because just like I said, I'm 14 years cancer survivor and an aneurysm wow. survivor. And, and you uh, look like a million bucks. It's, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's all about him. Okay. You know. Now, um, I'm like, and I would say this, yes, I'm a genius. That's all right. You know, I mean, um, I did learn how to read when I got in the school band, but I'm most gifted from God. Okay. Yes. There's nothing wrong with admitting that. No, yes. What would you like to, in the coming years, what would you like to see happen to Beverly Guitar Watkins? Well, number one is I do play in churches, too. Okay. I play uh, for my <clears throat> church in Commerce, Georgia, Jonas Chapel, which is the old family church. And uh, I play at uh, another church, True Deliverance. Okay. Then there's another church I play for is uh, Emmanuel uh, Tabernacle. Wow. What I really want to see now is um, I'm living in a senior place. But I would say this, I am a senior, but I don't act senior. Right. You know, because I'm a musician. Right. What I really want is, I want to record a gospel. That's what I want to do, a hmm. gospel CD next. Well, let's yes. see who we can talk to and make that yes, happen. Yes, I want to do a gospel. I have 12 gospels written, and I have 12 blues, but, um, I really want to do a gospel. The reason why is we have to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you know. He will be your um, promoter and he will put peoples in your life that want to see you get somewhere, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm a living witness. I'm not just sitting here talking. I know what he's done for me. <laughs> you know. It's a lovely story. Yes. The next time you come to the Twin Cities, we have some great gospel churches that have phenomenal music on Sundays. I some would great like to come. Gospel choirs. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have to, you know, you, you are kind of the yes. embodiment of the blues men, and there's been a lot of them over the years, blues men and women, that play in the clubs on Saturday night and play in church on Sunday morning. I've done that. Blind Willis, yeah. or I used to well uh, go to Blind Willis, didn't get home till about 3 o'clock in the morning. Come home, I had to come down. Let me say this, I don't have to drink to get high. <laughs>
Jesus. We'll see you guys. Beverly, get Tom Walker. I supposed to do with the rest of the show? <laughs> jam! Just jam? Jam on! How, how am I supposed to come out and follow you? That is what you call a show stopper. Tell us your definition of what the blues is. Well, my definition is um, when God put you in your mother's womb, you was already what he wanted you to be. That's what it is about the blues. The blues is a feeling. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. It's not about bad times, and it's not about good times. It's about a feeling. Mm. So I started off with piano. Oh, is that right? But this is what the Lord wants me to do. Oh. 